Hello everyone, uh, this is Alexander Johnson, and today we're going to be taking a look at the 10 things that I wish I knew when starting out with blocks. Now this video is meant to share a few of my tips, things that I've learned, and as you can tell from the title, things that I wish I had known when I first got started. So for me, getting started with blocks was a fantastically easy experience and I have had a lot of fun with it. As of right now, creating this video, I have have about 35 hours logged in blocks and about 15 in tilt brush. So today we'll be looking at blocks specifically and I'm gonna be starting off with our very first tip. Tip number one is grouping of objects. I cannot, in fact, I'm embarrassed to tell you how long it took for me to realize this feature was in there. So if you don't know where it is, very easy, take a look at this video. You'll see that I click on the red button at the top of my controller. That is after I've selected multiple objects. That creates a group of objects that can be moved together. You can ungroup the objects by clicking on that same button. Tip number two, snapping of objects. Really important to use when you're trying to get things aligned. So in order to make snapping of objects work, you have an object selected. You need to hold down on the left trigger on the HEC Vive and that line will appear and it will snap to different parts of the object that you're lining up your controller with. The third tip is make sure you take a look at the experimental options. There are a lot of them. They're still being tested. Some of them will potentially cause your game to crash. So just keep that in mind. But you need to go over to the options button on the left controller, scroll down to where you see the little beaker, you activate that and you can select any of the experimental options there. Tip number four, when to use grid snapping. Grid snapping is hugely important if you wanna get your 3D models to be lined up correctly, uh, especially when snapping Normal snapping of objects is not gonna do the trick. Do keep in mind that there are gonna be times where you want the additional freedom of having grid snapping off. So general rule of thumb here, turn grid snapping on when you want to move a copy of an object or align an object with another one. But when you wanna get those real fine details, turn it off so you have a bit more control. Tip number five, a lot of people wonder why are there not more colors to choose from when you are uh, coloring the different objects inside of blocks. Well, it took me a while to realize this, but the creations that you make in blocks, you're probably going to, going to want to export those and import those into a different software to do some finishing touches, uh, whether that's Unity or an online platform like Sketchfab. So you want control of changing the way those materials look anyways. So if you're going to be doing a complex model, you want to import that to a different tool, don't worry about how the colors look. Use colors that can identify material sources that you wanna change later. So put all your oranges uh, together, everything you want to then change to a different texture. So don't really worry about how it looks inside of blocks. Use this more um, for planning out your final piece. Tip number six, your game autosave. So you can find those autosave file locations. This is fantastic if for whatever reason, like me, you lose your work. Something happens, your game crashes, your power turns off, whatever it might be. You don't wanna just have wasted 30 minutes to an hour, um, especially when working on big projects. So Blocks does autosave for you. Here is the location of where that would be. There's also a link in the description of this video that will take you to the post where I found this and you can follow those instructions uh, by opening up the command console and to load and auto save. Tip number seven, saving big projects, be patient. Two of the projects that I worked on were enormous. I went crazy, had a, an incredible poly count and at the end there, I would be looking at about uh, 15 minutes save times on my computer. Granted, everyone's rig is different. Just keep in mind that it might look like it's frozen on your external display, but just leave it alone. Don't touch it, come back to it later, keep an eye on it. I like to just time it to see how long it was taking to save, um, but it almost always comes through. So just make sure you wait. Tip number eight, 
beware of Z fighting. For those of you that don't know what Z fighting is, uh, take a look at the description of this video. It's really simple. If you put two shapes on top of each other, but not quite on top of each other, loading that into a different rendering software or 3D software, you'll get a lot of flickering. So just beware of that. It can mess up your model. Tip number nine, the limitations of shrinking objects. Ooh, this one also, spent a lot of time trying to figure this out. When you are grouping an object, if you model it when it's really large and you wanna shrink it down to make it to scale with everything else, do keep in mind that occasionally when you're shrinking it down, you'll hear a repeating noise uh, that's indicating that it won't get any smaller. So after breaking it up and trying to see what I could shrink, I found out that just certain shapes have a tough time getting smaller. For example, cylinders can only be so small. If you want something smaller, you'll have to use the smallest version of the stroke tool. Um, play around with this, but when you hear that noise, don't fear, just break your model and check to see what are the things that cannot be shrunk. And the final tip here, this is again talking about the stroke tool. This tool is really your friend. It's tough to get to use at first. You need to learn how to use the stroke tool effectively, and that's for doing a lot of small details. Um, it's fantastic because you can actually get really good straight lines with it. Um, when you first click with the right trigger, you can then move your hand and it will keep a perfectly straight line. Uh, you can actually chain this multiple times as well by hitting the left trigger on your controller so you can get multiple pieces forming. Just practice with the stroke tool, learn when to use it appropriately, um, and it can really help with the fine details of your modeling. And that's it. So again, thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a few things. If you haven't gotten a chance to get into blocks, you definitely need to. It is a lot of fun.